Uh, thank you very much. It's my great pleasure to uh, introduce Dr. Meng Dung from Ag and Biological Engineering. Uh, Dr. Dung uh, joined us here at Purdue in 2014, and I think as a theme, maybe of uh, the selection for all of our associate professors today, very in, uh, interdisciplinary. So Dr. Dung has a uh, PhD from University of Virginia in chemical engineering, not in uh, agricultural or biological engineering, uh, and also works in multiple scales across engineering as well. So we will uh, certainly hear about his research in uh, his research focus on engineering uh, polymeric biomaterials that facilitate and control uh, cell responses and differentiation, particularly in animal tissues and including humans. And so you'll see some examples of that today. Uh, Dr. Dung has a passion for translating his uh, research into functional and practical technologies that have commercial applications. And as part of these efforts, he founded Adipo Therapeutics to commercialize some of the work from his research. Uh, he's been recognized for his entrepreneurial uh, efforts. Uh, he was one of two more Inventor Fellow nominees from Purdue University in 2017, and he received the Entrepreneurship Fellow Silver Award also in 2017. In addition to all of his research and entrepreneurial activities, uh, Dr. Deng also teaches a graduate level course that's cross-listed between biomedical engineering and ag and biological engineering in the topic area of tissue engineering. And he also teaches one of the core undergraduate courses in our biological engineering program on enzyme and microbial kinetics. Dr. Dung, I'm looking very forward to your presentation and I hope you all join me in welcoming him to the podium. Thanks so much, Nate. Thanks to the organizers uh, for putting this together. So it's uh, my great pleasure to be here uh, to share with you my work uh, in terms of uh, on developing cell instructive biomaterials for cellular and the regenerative engineering. Given the limited time I have today, I want to give a broad stroke what we do and how it actually combines different areas in terms of material science, bioengineering, cell biology, and translational medicine to move forward. Yeah, so our research focuses on three thrust areas, advanced biomaterials, cell engineering, and regenerative engineering. So in advanced biomaterials, we focus on rational design of new materials, new polymers, polymer composite by exploring synthetic chemistry and the study of cell material interactions. In cell engineering, we're interested in understanding basic cellular processes and engineering effective ways to modulate cell function. In regenerative engineering, we hope to develop uh, biomimetic scaffolds for regeneration of muscular skeletal tissues, which involves bone, skeletal muscles, as well as their tissue interfaces. So as you can see, there are natural synergies among the three uh, thrust areas, and our research spans from fundamental science to translational research. You're welcome to look into our research website at regeneratedmatter.com for more details about our research work. So in particular, we actually uh, uh, more Interesting understanding how different material, physical, chemical, and cues affect the cells. So we can actually integrate the knowledge into the rational design of uh, cell instructed by materials. So that's just to give an example, taking our first, uh, recent work in skeletal muscle regenerative engineering as an example. So we actually take the uh, uh, top-down based uh, scaffold engineering approach. We examine the tissue properties in terms of the hierarchic structures to review the micro and the nanoscale features. So we can actually create a synthetic matrix mimic the tissue properties. In, in this case, you have, uh, we have a skeletal muscle that is uh, made of oriented muscle fibers providing this cellular microenvironment. So actually, accordingly, we can create a synthetic aligned fiber matrices that mimic that uh, anisotropic organization of the native uh, muscle fibers. Interestingly, we actually we see the muscle cells on this uh, synthetic uh, fiber matrices. The cells actually can sense the topography, align their body, according to the direction of the fibers. And uh, interestingly, this is after just seven days of culture, you can see that a robust uh, uh, formed uh, uh, myotubes on this uh, fiber matrices. So essentially by further actually tailoring that the fiber diameter and the structures, we can, we can fine tune the cellular response in terms of the cell proliferation differentiation for different the regeneration applications. So next, I'm going to switch gear to talk about our work in terms of dealing with the problem too much fat, more specifically, too much bad fat, too much energy storing wet fat, which leads to problems such as obesity, diabetes. So essentially, in our body, we have another type of fat that was uh, discovered 
It's called actually brown fat or good fat. It's essentially in contrast to this energy storing wet fat. Brown fat can burn the excessive energy by generating heat. It's part of a natural defense mechanism for protecting us in conditions such as cold. So our idea is actually to harness that physiologic differences between these two types of fat to tackle the problem in terms of uh, too much uh, bad fat. So essentially we have developed a platform technology that uh, is made of uh, now achieving nanoparticles that can be injected directly to fat to induce that the natural conversion of the fat. So the nanoparticles are about 200 nanometer in diameter, so actually they can get into the cells and uh, combining this uh, the small molecule notch inhibitor and the polymer matrix allows to develop a standard release formulation to minimize the number of injections. Here I'm going to show you a video of the journey of engineering nanoparticles. So leverage the well-established application of injectable medicines. Nanoparticles shine purple here. When the particles are in contact with fat cells, they can actually quickly get into the fat cells. Obviously, we're optimizing the nanoparticles in the surface properties as well as the, uh, the size so that they can get into the, the cells quickly. After they're inside cells, they release the drug payload, not inhibitor in this case, to inhibit not signaling and uh, promote the expression of brownie markers such as UCP1 uncoupling protein 1 here, leading to the fat cell conversion. That's our basic idea behind technology. Over the years, this, this work is actually uh, conducted in collaboration with uh, Shi Huang Kuan in animal science. Over the years, we have damaged the efficacy of this technology using both small rodents as well as recently large animals in pigs. So what, we have a cool technology. So this is what we learned at the uh, NSFI Corps uh, uh, kickoff meeting in Detroit. The mentor would ask, so we were so excited to share our cool technology, the mentor would ask, so what? Get out of your comfort zone, which is a normally office, and uh, so this is what, what we did. Our team consists of myself, my uh, postdoc, Gazda, as well as our business mentor, Wade. So we went out, talked to customers, which includes uh, patients, uh, doctors, uh, primary care physicians, endocrinologists, dietitians, as well as uh, different companies, insurance companies, pharmaceutical companies. That was a quite intense process. So eight weeks, we interviewed more than 100 uh, customers, but the process was worthwhile. So what you will learn is not only actually the discussions with those customers provide the important insights into our business canvas, but also actually it helped us validate the technology market fit. So at the end, our decision was a goal. So I obtained the express license by working with OTC, those wonderful people there. Uh, we actually got that the, uh, the process done very quickly at the end of uh, December 2016. So obviously, to be honest, I had no idea what that, that entails back then. But fortunately for me, as part of the Purdue ERA program, which stands for Entrepreneurial Learning Academy. So that process was quite helpful. And uh, we obviously submitted a grant immediately to compete for funding. So luckily we received the NHSBR grant and uh, along with the uh, matching fund from Elevate Venture as well as the Zero uh, World from PRF, which are critical to help us survive at the beginning. So we just closed our 2.2 million seed run we're raising uh, our Series A funding to cover the, uh, the next steps in terms of our development. And it's an exciting time with Adipo. We have uh, experienced the professional team in terms of bringing different areas of activities, including technology development, business management, manufacturing, CMC, regulatory, preclinical, and clinical development. It really takes a village. And, uh, Adipo was actually uh, recently named as the, uh, the winner of the Elevate the Nexus State with the uh, pitch competition. Also recently submitted our phase two SBR grant uh, to obtain non-diluted funding to support our work. And uh, Adipo technology was also highlighted uh, by the IEEE policy as one of the three technology to manage weight, weight, especially by boosting that energy expenditure to bring that energy ba balance back to the normalcy. So journey continues, it's an exciting time as we continue our efforts to move uh, the clinical translation of technology to benefit the patients. So over the course of my career, I have been so fortunate to have uh, many great teachers in my life who helped shape my life today. So essentially the significant impacts that I received from those wonderful teachers have really motivated me to contribute to the learning process of others. I learned from my PhD advisor, a life is uh, not important, 
except in the impact it has on other lives. So essentially, I, there's old Chinese saying, give your man a fish, you feed him for one day. Teach him how to fish, you feed him for his whole life. That's essentially my belief in my teaching. I teach both graduate course and the graduate course at Purdue. At the graduate level, I teach polymer biomaterials, which is a cross list with BME. We have great added a textbook for this class, and this textbook book covers the design, synthesis, characterization, and application of different uh, polymeric biomaterials. And over the past two years, I've been working with uh, Purdue online engineering team to convert this course into online hybrid uh, version so that the students who are working in industry can also take this uh, course simultaneously. At undergraduate level, I teach AB370, which is biological and microbial kinetics and reaction engineering. It's a fun course, and also it's great to welcome new class each year and uh, interact with them throughout the learning process. Over the process, they also help me learn, improve my, my teaching as well, which results in a number of uh, teaching recognitions. Obviously, the work I present today results from hard work and the dedication of this wonderful group of uh, individuals. So we have a diverse group of uh, students coming from different backgrounds. We we'll always uh, seek aspiring undergraduate students uh, to take part in our research efforts and to enhance their learning as well while they actually uh, take in the courses. So here's actually an example. This Carter and Maggie are actually were the first students I recruited at uh, Purdue while still, I was still setting up the lab in Bingley. So they have uh, worked on electric spinning, as you can see here, as well as a um, skeletal muscle regeneration project. And uh, Helena was actually the uh, biology honors student who has been with me since her freshman year, has worked on bone regeneration work, is now completing her medical school at the Ohio State. And this is our lab hosting the for its students uh, for hands-on biomaterials uh, labs. So over the years, it's really great, gratifying to see them grow and pursue their own big dreams. With that, I'd like to thank all the members of my lab and the Idaho team. So with the COVID, this is a real picture that uh, we, we have just taken. We got the feedback from FDA in terms of uh, guidance from FDA on our plan moving forward. And also I'd like to thank my wonderful mentors, collaborators, and colleagues for their advice, help, and support. And also I'd like to thank my funding source. Lastly, I'd like to thank my family, who has been uh, my cheerleaders. So it's uh, great to, to have their support and uh, be here where I am today. Thank you so much. I'd like to take any questions you may have. Wonderful. Are there any, any questions from the audience or online? Very interesting. I, <clears throat> I was wondering, um, since you do a lot of work uh, on the research side on uh, on mammalian cells, um, you know, how has, I mean, you're sitting in an interdisciplinary facility, Bidley Bioscience, and then you're also working with colleagues in animal sciences. How much has that environment allowed you to, I mean, how critical is small animal, large animal, you know, tests to your success? And how does Bindley contribute, you know, as an interdisciplinary center, uh, you know, uh, towards that? Oh, thank you, uh, Arvin. So essentially, as I mentioned, so I was setting up a lab in Bingley. So Bingley is actually a very unique place uh, to encourage interdisciplinary research. So I, I like the idea in terms of uh, uh, no silo. Right, the, 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 the disciplines between science, the borders are disappearing. I mean, to tackle challenges in life science, medicine these days, you really need to have interdisciplinary team. Uh, for me, I think one of the, uh, the important aspects was actually being in the, in the, in the Bingley, actually be able to collaborate with others who are from different uh, backgrounds in terms of, uh, and also we have a great uh, Bingley science team to support in terms of a different core facility as well, which uh, help uh, conduct the experiments. And another thing, so while we love Bingley, I still uh, miss the, the time there, but uh, we, it's also exciting time for us actually to uh, 
uh, we recently moved back to uh, ABE building. We're on the fifth floor, which is a great uh, facility. Um, the um, collaboration synergy is just great to be able to actually collaborate with colleagues in the same department as well. I think a uh, very, very important uh, aspect of the collaboration is really that uh, synergy among the disciplines. In our case, that we need not only the, uh, the research, uh, the tools in terms of nanotechnology and material science, but also cell biology, development biology, as well as the other parts in the clinical medicine to actually develop uh, functional products that may hopefully uh, benefit the patients in, in one day. Stop asking questions <clears throat> and just uh, listen. But, uh, uh, well, I need to lodge another complaint because uh, uh, every time Nate or Bernie talk to me and says, you know, well, Hmong is doing great. It's like, you don't have to tell me that. I know I'm, I'm doing okay. Uh, says, no, no, now you, Hmong. Uh, so, uh, you know, our names uh, have uh, certain similarities. Uh, uh, but uh, clearly your standard of excellence is way higher than mine. And, you know, Adipo Therapeutics. Uh, one question is, uh, uh, glad to see IEDC programs, PRF programs have been of use, and congratulations on the uh, commercialization success. Uh, who are your customers? Thank you so much. Uh, um, first of all, it's just uh, been so fortunate to be in the supportive uh, college and also uh, in, in terms of, I still remember that uh, uh, when I first uh, got this SBR grant, I don't know what to do, to be honest, because uh, that takes a significant chunk of my time in terms of to be able to do that. And uh, really the uh, supportive uh, uh, leadership as well as uh, the department uh, have really made this happen in terms of uh, to allow me to actually embark on this journey. But uh, to and so your questions about the, uh, the, the customers, so we're actually current based on our market feedback, talking with uh, leading physicians. So our, our current uh, uh, patient essentially are those uh, uh, type 2 diabetes who are overweight as our initial customer base. But they obviously we believe the platform technology we have uh, with other potential indications will also keep in line as well. We have uh, uh, other uh, candidate assets that are also under development with, uh, with IP protections that uh, once we uh, get this first uh, live product finalized, uh, secured, that we, are, we will be ready for the launch of the next generation. So are you thinking of directly, so you're thinking of directly selling to the uh, end user or your direct customers will be device, medical device companies or other therapeutic companies? Good question. So essentially, we're, our current plan is actually we're trying to develop the assets through the proof concept clinical studies, more specifically phase two clinical studies. So after that, uh, we'll actually license our technology to the big farmers in terms of uh, as the next steps for phase three and the commercialization. We're already in active discussion with uh, five different pharmaceutical companies of interest, including Lilly, Nova, as well as uh, LV in terms of uh, to start the discussion about collaboration of partnerships in the future. Excellent. Any, any final questions? Online in the chat? No. All right. Thank you very much.